In this video, we will be discussing the mechanisms of sex determination in Drosophila melanogaster and the role of alternative splicing. Like mammals, Drosophila, or fruit flies, produce XX females and XY males, but how they achieve their distinguishable sexes is very different. Drosophila have four homologous pairs of chromosomes. There are three pairs of autosomes with two larger pairs and one smaller pair, and one pair of sex chromosomes with the Y chromosome much smaller than the X. A normal female fruit fly has two X chromosomes, and males have an X and a Y. While in mammals, the Y chromosome is what is the main factor in determining the male sex, in Drosophila, it is more of a bystander. Involved in the sex determination process is the balance or ratio of X chromosomes to autosomes as well as the alternative splicing of different sex determining factors. The Y chromosome is not involved in the sex determination process. Instead, it contains genes for sperm formation in the adult males. First, let's take a look at the ratio. A normal female fruit fly has two X chromosomes and two sets of autosomes. Thus, her ratio is one. Normal male fruit flies, on the other hand, have one X chromosome and two autosomes with a ratio of 0.5. If the resulting ratio is less than 0.5, the fly will become a meta male or a super male. If the ratio is higher than one, the fly will become a meta or super female. I mentioned before that the process of alternative splicing also plays a critical role in the sex determination pathway. A few different genes have been identified as key players in this process. This includes two splice factors, sex lethal, which is a splicing repressor, transformer, which is a splicing activator, and a transcription factor, double sex, which is a transcriptional repressor. The products of these genes in the sex determination pathway are all subject to alternative splicing. The first step in the pathway includes reading the X chromosome to autosome ratio which determines the cascade of gene products in the following phases. These gene products transmit information about the ratio to the other genes that are involved in phenotypes relating either to the male or the female sex. In the male developmental pathway, which is the default pathway, the cascade is triggered by a ratio of 0.5. Both sex lethal and transformer are transcribed but the RNAs of both are spliced constitutively to keep an exon that has a premature stop codon. This renders the resulting truncated proteins non-functional. When there are no functional sex lethal and transformer products made, the double sex transcript is spliced to produce a male version of the double sex protein that deactivates female characteristic genes in favor of the male. The differences in splice patterns between the male and the female fruit flies are set up by expression of the protein sex lethal. Female embryos have early expression of sex lethal in response to the number of X chromosomes or the ratio value of one. This allows sex lethal to auto-regulate its own splicing in females and as a result dictates the female development. In the females, the sex lethal full protein is an RNA binding regulator or repressor that precludes the inclusion of an intron containing the premature stop codon found in its own mRNA. This allows the expression of the full length protein. In the males, sex lethal does not carry out its full potential as a splice repressor, which leads to the inclusion of the premature stop codon in the mRNA, which produces the truncated non-functional sex lethal protein. In females, sex lethal also interferes with the proximal three prime splice site in the transformer gene found downstream in the sex determination cascade. This interference leads to a functional TRA regulatory protein. The transformer protein activates splicing by binding to specific RNA sequences in the double sex exon and activating what would normally be a suboptimal splice signal. Then, along with its constitutively produced partner protein, transformer 2, the TRA protein produces a female-specific spliced form of the double sex transcript whose encoded protein can regulate and turn off the male genes in favor of the female. So how is sex lethal able to regulate its own splicing? 
Well, for both sexes, the first step in the splice pathway creates a lariat or looped formation at the branch point sequence found upstream from the three prime splice site. This three prime splice site and the loop formation also precede the third exon of sex lethal pre mRNA, which has the premature stop codon. The splice factor SPF45 then binds to an AG dinucleotide motif in the three prime splice site. In males, this promotes the inclusion of the third exon with its premature stop codon and then creates a non-functioning RNA molecule. In the females, sex lethal binds to the polypyrimidine tract ahead of the splice site. It then interacts with SPF45 in activating it. This leads to the exclusion of the third exon and the production of a functioning RNA molecule. Similarly, sex lethal also enforces the alternative splicing pattern of the transformer transcript. For the males, the splicing factor U2AF binds the polypyrimidine tract on the three prime end of the transformer entron ahead of its second exon. This promotes the splicing at the proximal site of the second exon, which will lead to the inclusion of a premature stop codon in the male mRNA. In females, sex lethal, which as you may recall is a repressor of splicing, binds the polypyrimidine tract instead, which blocks U2AF from binding to that splice site. As a result, U2AF binds to and promotes the splicing at an alternative distal 3' splice site, which also promotes the skipping of the intron ahead of exon 2 that contains the premature stop codon, and thus encodes the full-length transformer protein in the females. In the females, transformer in turn regulates the alternative splicing of the double sex pre-mRNA with the help of transformer 2 and RBP1 but not in the males. For both sexes, the first three exons of double sex are constitutively spliced. But for the males, the three prime splice site upstream of exon four is weak and not recognized by the splice machinery. This results in the exclusion of exon four and splicing together of exon three and exon five with polyadenylation taking place after exon six. The female-specific version of transformer protein recruits and promotes the binding of RBP1 and transformer 2 to form heterotrimeric protein complexes on each of the six copies of the exon splice enhancer found on exon 4. They then recruit the splice machinery to the three prime splice site that was otherwise weak ahead of the exon. As a result, the fourth exon is then included in the final double sex mRNA, and the transcript is polyadenylated after that fourth exon. The male specific spliced form of double sex RNA produces a protein with the exon structure 12356, which turns off any genes that are female specific. Conversely, the female-specific splice patterns produces a double sex protein with the exon structure 1234, which inhibits the expression of any male-specific genes. So there you have it, a brief exploration into the process of sex determination and alternative splicing in fruit flies. For more information, please check out some of these other resources. Thank you very much for watching.